Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Join this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway, the people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, it's another awesome chat coming at you from Pittsburgh, PA, the Mayhem Studios. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. We got another fun one for you guys this week and uh, and, and perfect for the holidays and talking about food and, and everything. And uh, and uh, I think we're going to have a really good one. Uh, but in the meantime, check out awesomecast.net. This and so many other interviews from around the Pittsburgh area and beyond. People doing some great stuff in technology, social media, and and and, and beyond. Uh, and uh, you can please follow us on social media and, and subscribe to this on the YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, all over the place. And share it. Share if you like the, the discussions that we're having or the people that we're having on there. Um, um, you know, share share what they're doing uh, w- with everybody. Uh, that's why we're doing this. So with me is uh, Leah uh, Lizarondo from 412foodrescue.org. How are you doing today? Great. It's a great Friday in Pittsburgh. It is. And now, and now you're, you, I, I, you first came on my radar but way back at TEDx uh, Grandview Avenue. I don't know. Maybe they changed it to Pittsburgh by then. I can't remember. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, I, I know you, you're involved with Brazen Kitchen. You have a lot of great uh, stuff on there. And, and I heard about this concept, 412 Food Rescue. And we've been, I've been trying to track you down for a while and, and making sure you guys are you know, uh, 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 get out there a bit. Uh, so yeah. tell me, what, what's going on with 412 Food Rescue? It sounds like it's a great concept. Yeah, 412 Food Rescue um, was founded early this year. Well, actually, around this time last year, um, my friend Giselle Fetterman and I started the conversation about, you know, basically extending what she's been doing at the free store in Rada, which is providing, repurposing, you know, surplus goods that are perfectly good that we're headed for the landfill and distributing it to people who are in need and we wanted to take the same model and do it with food because she does get some food from costco and we said what if we can do this for all of the county what if we have all the grocery stores sign on to let us know when they have food available and that we'll pick it up and then we'll donate it to nonprofits and serve those who are hungry and from that little conversation We've, you know, everything kind of snowballed and here we are now one year later and we have redistributed over 150,000 pounds of food wow. from about 20 donors to about 50 nonprofits. And um, we are launching our Crowd Rise campaign. We launched it last Tuesday. We're raising money now to get a truck because we want to be able to cover donations like, you know, that would fit in, that would not fit in a car, you know, pallets full of food. The other day we got a call for 700 cases of bananas Mm. and we just couldn't do that. We can't send 700 people to pick that up. And it sounds like uh, from, you know, from from listening to your presentation a a while ago, now you guys really kind of solved kind of a connection problem between those wanting to give food to those that needed the food, right? Uh, Exactly. What was that problem in in particular you're, you're, you're trying to solve? So we waste 40% of our food, um, 40% of the food that we produce, you know, Mm. and this is not, you know, the food that's on your plate. This is perfectly viable food. Now, the difficulty with, and that that loss happens not just in, you know, in the grocery stores. It happens all the way from the beginning of the supply chain, which means the farm, to our homes. Our homes are actually the largest sources of food waste. We waste 25% of the food we buy. So you can imagine going home from Giant Eagle or whatever grocery store you go to and you come home with four bags of food, you might as well just throw one bag out because you're going to anyway somehow in that whole process. So um, the difficulty with transporting with, with these donations from the grocery stores is that they come in variable sizes and they're also usually perishable food. And, um, you know, traditional models of pantries can't handle this kind of waste because one day it'll be a case of bananas. The next day it will be 13 cases of blueberries. You know, there's no way to plan around it and you can't really send a to respond to, you know, one bag of bread. But you can send someone who cares about hunger and um, who wants to take 15 minutes out of their day to pick up that food and deliver it to the nearest um, shelter maybe. And basically, if you multiply that process in one store into the over 200 stores in the Pittsburgh region, then you're thinking of millions of pounds of food being saved every year. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, It's it's a a very interesting problem. And you guys have already found a lot 
uh is, is there is there um you know, other than like a, a truck are there like any gaps in that you're still trying to fill at this point or or yeah our app is still in development we have a really dedicated development team but they are doing this outside of their day jobs mm -hmm. so we won this deal city code fast um last february now i think and we have a team of six talented developers who've been working very hard to get this app out. Um, it is not a simple endeavor, um, and we're hoping to get that app out by, by early 2016. Mm -hmm. and, and I know I, I've just uh, involved with the Pittsburgh Foundation. We just work on a campaign. Of course, there's the ongoing uh, budget crisis that's affecting a lot of food pantries here uh, yes. in, in the area. Has that been affecting you, or are you kind of helping to supplement uh, some issues they may be having at this point? Yes, so we um, we hope to be creating impact by supplementing significantly. We get a lot of donations from wholesalers, aside from retailers, mm -hmm. um, Paragon Foods, which is the largest, um, basically, fresh food supplier to restaurants here in Pittsburgh, you know, donates to us. And I hope that you know the stuff that we get from them, as well as Gordon Food Service, which are large quantities, are able you know are able to stem some of that shortage. Certainly. Um, and you're also, like I mentioned, you're part of, uh, uh, you know, a Brazen Kitchen and, um, you're, you know, one of, one of, one of the ones I look towards to, you know, for, uh, talking about food and health and, and kind of being a little more, yes. you know, mindful of those kinds of things. Can you tell me a little bit about your background in that, that may have led you to this, uh, to this project? Yeah. Right. So Brazen Kitchen was how I started in food activism. Mm -hmm. And I still write um, on the blog, not quite as often as before. And I used to have a weekly column with Pittsburgh Magazine that um, I recently kind of let go of to focus on um, forward to food rescue. And my mission was to make everyone aware of what healthy eating is like and how big of a difference it can make in their lives. And through that process, I did that for four years, still continue to do it. You know, I would write about healthy food. I would do cooking classes. A big gap that I saw is that there's an access gap between those who can buy this healthy food and those who can't. And so, I mean, 412 Food Rescue is the first kind of solution that I feel like I can contribute to to help stem that gap. And so all that we rescue are fresh, perishable food. We rescue fruits and vegetables, and we distribute it to those who serve the food insecure. And most of the people um, who are in this demographic typically have access to food that are less fresh. You know, when you go to pantries, you know, food has to be shelf stable. And oftentimes, while that is an important aspect of stemming hunger, it might not be the most optimal food that, that one can have. Certainly, certainly. I, I know there's the, the also the food desert concept, especially in the in the city neighborhoods too. Yes, definitely. So a lot of the places we serve are food deserts as well as transportation deserts. A lot mm -hmm. of people don't talk about transportation deserts. So a lot of the um, interventions with food deserts also always have something to do with maybe putting in a pantry somewhere close. But sometimes, like in areas like Trenton and Clareton. There might be a pantry they can go to and might be eligible to go to a pantry, but because they don't, they live not only in a food desert, but also a transportation desert, there's no way for people to get to the pantries. So we bring the food to them. So we work with a number of Allegheny County Housing Authority sites to know that we distribute directly to where the people are. Good, 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 good. And, and, and you say you, you have a, a campaign going on right now. As we're recording this, we're going to try to get this out uh, same day. Uh, tell us how that's going yeah. and uh, and uh, how people can help out. Yeah, so right now we have a crowd rise campaign going. We're raising, trying to raise 25000 in 25 days. And um, we are raising money for a truck, um, a small refrigerated truck that will allow us to operate um, five days a week and pick up. Um, well, we operate seven days a week currently with mm -hmm. any ad hoc pickup from grocery stores, but we can't pick up large quantities um, because we only rely on volunteers with cars. So when we do get calls for three pallets of food, um, we want to be able to make sure that we can get to it without any problems. Right now, we have to mobilize a lot of volunteers for just a single pickup and a truck would let us just efficiently dispatch you know that vehicle and be able to pick up that food and deliver it to different nonprofits in one fell swoop excellent excellent uh anything else uh, you know what's kind of on the horizon for for 412 food rescue uh what are ways that people can help uh, other you know other than the current campaigns or if they're they're, they're finding us uh, maybe a month or so in the future here uh for you guys what are, what are your pain points right now 
Well, um, on a more immediate horizon, we're having an event on December 7th, that's this Monday, at Repair the World Pittsburgh. That's at 6022 Broad Street, and it's a free event. Um, it's co-sponsored um, by um, local Pittsburgh. They're going to launch their winter issue on Monday that features 412 Food Rescue. Square Cafe is going to be cooking food made from rescue food. And um, Rivertown Brewing, as well as Union Pig and Chicken, will be providing drinks and it's a free event just to thank everyone who's supported us everyone who's liked us on facebook everyone who's talked about us and just thanking everyone for a wonderful first year and then we have a lot of things planned in 2016 so um if people can like our facebook page or sign up as a volunteer on our website we'll be able to make sure to reach out to them when our app goes live as well as um share some of the new things that we have on the mic Awesome. Now, so you're, you're obviously four one two, very focused on Pittsburgh and, and and the area and this in this town. Um, what are you know? Is this a concept you would like to see kind of pop up in other major areas? Um, you know, if people are interested in that. You know, do you have any advice for them for starting a service like this or helping or or or, or anything of that like? Yes. So the reason why we actually called it 412 Food Rescue is that our objective is not only to help our region. Our objective is to be able to replicate this and scale this in other cities as well. Mm -hmm. So um, we're envisioning, you know, 673 or whatever the area codes are. And we will help um, anyone who is interested in starting um, one of their own in their area and be able to share our application, our technology, as well as the process that we follow. That way, they don't have to do kind of the, the foundation work that we've done they can just do have like a little turnkey you know for you know area code you know 555 food rescue and hopefully we'll start doing that by by next year awesome awesome so you're gonna you're gonna franchise this a little bit huh exactly <laughs> yes perfect. That's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, so please, everybody, go check it out. 412foodrescue.org. Follow all the social media and everything. And follow a, a, a great uh, TEDx talk that you had uh, that's up on your site yep. on Brazen Kitchen, of course. Um, Thank you. Uh, great stuff. Uh, uh, good. I, and and say, I do a lot of work um, talking about food. Mindfulness is very important. Um, yep. More so than you think to, uh, about your mind, I, I, I believe, um, yes. from all of this. So I agree. So, um, uh, you want to speak to that a little bit before I let you go? I'm sorry. Uh, do you want to speak a little bit to that kind of mind body, uh, food connection, uh, uh, before we let you go? Yeah. I mean, you know, when I started Brazen Kitchen, a lot of my circle are people like you. So it was mostly speaking to the choir right? and right. you know, a lot of us think that food is just the food that we put in our mouths, but actually, you know, and you've read this, a lot of people think this is um, new agey, you know, as they call it, but it's so true. It's really how your predisposition is. You know, I was interviewed for um, an article and one of the things that I said was that, you know, one of the things that I learned um, working um, all these years is that, you know, never take anything personally. And the connection with food and that is that, you know, when you stop taking things personally, you start, stop internalizing any negativity and you're much healthier. In the same way with food, you know, we're feeding not only, you know, our physical selves, but if we keep a mind that is healthy, you know, maybe meditating once a day, um, freeing yourselves from, from negative thoughts, that will amplify anything you do to your body. And you notice this, you know, when you're stressed out, your body is, you know, Less, I would say limber <laughs> and you might get more headaches and this is these are all manifestations of that and so you know it's not only just what you feed yourselves but what you feed um, your mind as well and you know when it translates also down to the people we work with you know when you think about poverty when you think about the pressures of poverty and and what that does to you when you don't know where your next meal is coming from you know us helping alleviate maybe some of that food insecurity will hopefully you know make them feel um give them a sense of more of a sense of well-being and hopefully contribute um to to health as well excellent i think it's really important especially on that line I know recently in some of the videos we were doing around the the budget cuts it was like you know hey these people if they're not you know, if they can't think of you know when the next job is coming from, when their next food is coming from, it's all encompassing, right? And, exactly. and that colors the rest of their decisions. If they're they're like, well, I can't, exactly. I can't think of the right. next meal. I can't think about 
getting a better job, improving my situation, whatever the case may be at that point. I think that's very, it's a very important um, uh, kind of keystone to the process, I guess. Exactly. And to, you know, throw a word out there that, you know, people hate probably it's that it's holistic. Right. You know, it's not right, just right. one approach. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Like I said, 412foodrescue.org and the brazenkitchen.com, right? I just close yes. the tab. <laughs> Go check it out. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, you on Twitter? Uh, where yes. can people follow you? Yes. So it's Leah Lizarondo on Twitter and 412foodrescue. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. Go check everything out and, and check out the rest of the interviews over at awesomecast.net. Share this stuff, especially this one this week, uh, especially here in the holiday season, um, you know, to find you know, new ways that you guys can help out um, as we lead into uh, the holidays and, and, and the cold time of the year as well. It's very, very, very mostly important at, at this time of the year. So thank you to my awesome guests. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. <laughs> This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.